Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is Bloodthirsty Thursday. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It is almost TGIF. Just one more day to go. Uh, I hope each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk. Whenever it is you're watching this, I hope you're having a great time with your family, friends, loved ones, doing whatever it is that makes you happy because that's what's most important in life. Um, you know, please do like, share, and subscribe. I love seeing all of your new faces around here. And all Always, 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 I can't stress it enough, look in the description box for more information on the daily film, such as the brief synopsis, um, your starring cast, your director, the runtime of the cut I am watching, uh, some little trivia if I can find anything worthwhile of mentioning, uh, and then of course a link to either a trailer or a scene, uh, so that way you can have a little more of a taste before you decide to jump in and... and uh, jump in and uh, uh, track down a copy or at least wa watch it in so, some way, shape, or form, whatever it is how you watch movies. Uh, whether it be a, a hard copy or, or uh, uh, streaming, uh, you know, that's, that's entirely your discretion. But I do suggest t watching today's movie. Uh, if you have a, if you're not down with buying hard copies, I'm sure there's uh, ways of of uh, purchasing uh, uh, a streaming copy. I think I saw on a on not Amazon, but uh, um, it's on. Um, uh, YouTube for for a couple of bucks, I believe it's like three or four ninety nine, something like that. It was pretty cheap from from what I I think I saw on there. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm wrong sometimes, aren't we all? Anyways, all right, let's get on to today's movie. Today's is a very fun one. It is none other than Society. Yes, folks, this is the uh, um, special edition that uh, Arrow first released when they uh, when they first. Uh, it was back when they were kind of getting their their start here in the U.S. Uh, it wasn't their first release by any means, but it was one of their early ones. Uh, this is a very fun release. It is all Im embossed or embossed or however you say that word. It's all, it's, it, it is very, it uh, has a texture to it that you can feel the faces are, are um, you can feel they're all the, the nooks and crannies, um, the word society, you can, you can feel it out. It's, it's just, it's an, a stunning release, and it goes all the way back. Hold on, I kept that part on there, but it goes all the way back to the other side. You know, I kept that because it gives you um, everything, the breakdown of everything that's on there, it gives you your synopsis and and um, some other information as well. So I just kept this with it. Um, otherwise, I mean, this part is kind of getting banged up if you have, can't tell there. But um, uh, otherwise, this is a, a pristine release. You know. This this is uh, one of my one of my cherished prizes. One that I watch uh, probably twice a year, uh, maybe once a year. It just depends on my mood, I guess. Um, but. Um, and what comes on this this release? It is packed to the gills. Uh, there is an interview with Brian Yesna on there. There's an interview with, with uh, multiple uh, characters from the cast, such as like uh, Billy Warlock and um, Devin DeVasquez. She she both both of them are on there. Uh, and then um, I forget who the uh, what the third guy's name is, but he's the uh, the uh, uh, main villain amongst the uh, the teenagers crowd he's he's the uh, uh ted the tycoon i believe is what his name is in this movie but he is uh the third person that is on there for that interview those interviews it's very uh they're both very very cool interviews yesna talking about his his career and how him and uh stuart gordon got hooked up with reanimate the reanimator re franchise uh um and how he ended up doing doing um other stuff with with him such as like honey I shrunk the kids. Uh, uh, what else did Yuzna do? He did. Um Oh shoot! There was a couple of things on on his his uh, uh, filmography that are very notable. The guy is, is no slouch uh, uh, behind the camera. Um, he's not the greatest behind the camera, but he's no slouch. 
Uh, and then the interview with the uh, cast, the the cast in it is very nice. It's very informative. Gives you a lot of different insight on on uh, the special effects uh, and how they all were uh, basically as as a casting crew. Uh, it, you know, you get a real vibe. And and uh, uh, some of the characters, so there's the way they come across as uh, as at those ages is is kind of a prima donna ish uh at least the three of them they they at that age they they were very cocky and it, it showed um because all three of them ended up doing stuff in their career most notably billy warlock who is the star of this this movie he ended up going on to do stuff like baywatch uh, and and uh, days of our lives and then i think he went on to do the young and the restless as well uh so he had quite the uh the illustrious television career like he did uh, hundreds of episodes of television the guy is was no slouch, slouch when it came to that end of the aspect now Devin Devasquez she she uh basically um uh, she did this uh uh she did um oh shoot there was one movie that she did that um a uh, house two. That was one that I I can think of right off the top of my head, which is one of her first first gigs before this one. This is her first like like big starring role. Was was this one right here? And then we got uh, um, uh, what else do we got on there? There's an amazing uh, interview with with screaming Mad George himself, the guy who is the uh, the man, the myth the legend the creator of of the uh, special effects for society and and many uh, many other films the guy is a uh, is a uh, uh, mad genius you know he is he is uh, abs does absolutely stunning work the guy um, his artwork is just out off this uh, off the charts out of this world like surrealistic just uh, uh, crazy body horror type type artwork which is so cool um i can't get enough of it i especially this one right here because it, it talked about he talked about how they had such a short schedule but they and he was only sleeping like three four hours a day uh and he was working on these sculpts like every day like he he said it should have took at least a week for each sculpt but he was doing them in a day so that shows you the dedication that this man had for for making this film for Brian Usna. Um now who else we got Evan Richards. Uh Evan Richards, I think he was in um shoot. There was something else he did that I remembered, but I can't think of it right off the top of my head. And then Ben Meyerson I don't recognize from anything. Um He's he was uh, I I looked at his his IMDb and there wasn't really anything notable besides this on his on his filmography. And then, like I said, this is directed by Brian Usna. And then, uh, um, what is this about exactly? Um, it's about this young young character. Um, he's about to turn eighteen. He's a uh, uh, He's kind of an it guy, like one of the cool guys in school, but he is not um, part of the uh, the rich, illustrious society that that um, everybody wants to be. Um, uh, they are a very um, uh, secretive society, uh, almost a uh, skull and bones type secretive. Like they they keep things very under wraps, and and you find out why, and it makes good sense why they would keep it under wraps because it is just mind blowing. The, it's mind-boggling, but um, uh, uh, um, he like he's running for class president. He's one of the star basketball players. Uh, he's he's your one of your ideal. He's an ideal uh, uh, son to have as, for as far as uh, um, what you could get for. Um, uh, like as far as honors go for high school, in my opinion, you know that he and he came across not as an asshole either, which is very nice. Um, you know that made him a more likable character, unlike you know everybody else in the movie. Uh, the guy that played Ted the Tycoon is just angry every scene he's in, and it absolutely shows. And I love love seeing him just get all pissy and angry over over uh, Billy Warlock's character it is just absolutely hilarious um 
but uh, uh, Billy Warlock's character is uh, his girlfriend is desperate desperate to make him part of the society. Uh, she wants him to go ask Ted the Tycoon, who is going to who is having a big 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 shindig like right after uh uh billy warlock's character his sister has a giant coming out party which is uh uh i don't know exactly what a coming out party is i'm guessing that it's coming out meaning that you're ready to be suited and ready start to start dating um that's i the only thing i gathered from it but i could be very wrong but their reason for the coming out party is very different which the brother was not invited to because he had a basketball game that he had to be be at which the the family you know decides that they're going to the to the uh coming out party opposed to the uh basketball game instead of uh having it a different night like a normal family would do <laughs> but um uh they they uh um she he starts noticing these weird things about his family like there's a scene towards the beginning where he go, where he needs to go get some uh suntan lotion from his uh sister and and there's this weird like va incest type vibe because he goes in there um she is clearly taking a shower and he is looking at her and he notices something very strange about her he notices that her torso her breasts and her head have completely turned around and are on her back uh so she so she can clean her backside it is very very um uh unreal looking like you don't get a really good look at it because it's through foggy um uh uh, uh, uh shower doors so you can't really see it 100 percent. but he goes over there like a weirdo and opens up the the shower doors to to reveal that sh there's nothing wrong with her at all uh she you know get out of here da -da -da -da, one of those kind of ordeals um so he starts that's that's the beginning of where he starts noticing weird little things about his parents uh his family in general like there's a weird incestual sex thing going on between the daughter and and the parents which the parents are very stuffy uh uh, uh types the dad is a very like ken looking dude from like barbie barbie and ken uh he is very he's a uh, very uh stuffy and very conservative he's he's uh an upper echelon in the society and you and when you find out to the when you find out to the final showdown you really see how their true colors and what their intentions really are now um the, along the way there is a, a kid that um at the very beginning as well he is uh was a guy that was was trying to get with with billy's care billy's sister um and she f notices that he is hiding in her, her uh, uh, closet, taking pictures, you know, recording stuff, blah, blah, blah. Which later on you find out that um, this character has placed um, a microphone in, in one of her earrings and then a, a some sort of hearing device underneath the uh, parent's car. So that he can keep track of, uh, keep tabs of what's going on with, the, with that trio because there, he knows that there's something not right with them as well. So he eventually uh, um, introduces uh, uh, Billy's character into this world that he, he has found out, which in turn the, the, that character dies, or at least um, what you think of he dies, and, and uh, you, you have a, a glimpse at what happened to him at the very end. Uh, it's very, very stunning as they call it. it's a shunting as they called it it's stunning um it, which involved them uh basically morphing into this man this guy's body and draining every little bit of his soul and his spirit and his body until there was nothing like at one point uh uh there's a judge who like uh points out that the kid has a beauty mark on his cheek uh which i i got one over there but um anyways uh <laughs> but anyway, uh he's got a very big one on his face but he noticed points out goes oh a beauty mark 
and then eventually later on you find out that the the judge after he's consumed his his portion of of the uh, character he gains that beauty mark but when he when he what he does to get that is just mind-boggling uh it's a it's a, a punch to the to the insides that's all i'm gonna say and it uh um really is is uh mind-blowing <laughs> uh it's it's a real warp of the brain it really stretches your head out if you know what i mean but uh, um, uh, he finally, after that one character dies, he he finds out even more that that there's something weird with this family. Uh, uh, he, at the the whole time, there's this whole side story of him running for for class president, and the the guy that he's running against is this typical nerdy type kid, but he's part of this upper echelon a society of as well. But um, at at the funeral for the one kid, he decides, oh, I'm gonna tell him like something weird you know something's up i want to want to meet you to tell you what's going on and then they they meet up and dude's dead they they quickly they they uh um stage the crime scene to where it looks like somebody else was there and that he's full of crap so he can basically uh, uh play more mind games on on uh, billy warlock's character so there's a lot of mind games going on between with him like they're they're clearly fucking with him you know one of those kind of things now, as far as any kind of ratings would go on this thing, um, this thing is very stunning. It is one of my my top choices of the week. Uh, it could easily be a Friday selection. That's how good this one is. I love it that much. But the movie I'm doing for tomorrow, I like more. Uh, but uh, uh, which is also an Arrow release as well. You know, I've done two Vinegar Syndromes, a uh, SOVHorror.com, and a and two Arrows this week which is pretty cool it's a stacked week i would say uh even though you, the uh the uh um two vinegar syndrome ones were very bizarre this one's bizarre as well too so it's been a a, a week of bizarrities uh tomorrow is another one that's that's out there but uh, back to this one on the ratings. Uh, on a technical side, this thing's put together really well. The story melds and and just works. Um, the effects still still look look pretty good. There's parts of it that are a little wonky, but. Um, you can quickly overlook it because it's supposed to be body horror, so it can look any way it wishes, uh, um, and it's it's just whatever the creator decides to make. That's that's how body horror works. It's it's a, a stretch of the imagination um, to the to the body. And the acting's pretty good. Billy Warlock's character is a solid character. Uh, everybody surrounding him is solid. Solid. Um, uh, the Devin character, Devin, uh, 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 what Devasquez, her characters uh, works very well. She's kind of a uh, uh, part of this upper echelon as well. But she she has a thing for Billy, and and uh, she wants to help him. And you find out uh, what her reasonings are exactly for for that in the end. Uh, I'm not going to reveal that because you should watch it yourself so i'm going to give this thing a four on the technical side and then as an entertainment side this thing's a four as well this is an eight out of ten movie in my opinion this is one everybody should see uh, especially if you're serious about your horror horror genres and you want to watch things uh that um uh uh, go a little under the radar. This is one of them that should not. This is should be in a uh, 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 a man mandated uh, a list of films that you should eventually watch. This one should be in that list. And by the way, this came out in 1989, but I don't. It didn't get a, a wide release till 1992, from what I from what I, I uh, uh, noticed on that. And I forgot to mention that it, this also comes with a very thick, hefty. Um, a graphic novel that adds on more to the story as well. 
All right, guys. I love your faces. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to get the hell out of here. I got things to do. I'll see you tomorrow with another amazing one. It's going to be a Frank Henelotter movie, uh, which I am a huge, huge, huge fan of his work. The guy has done some amazing stuff, and the one tomorrow is one of my favorites of his. Peace as always.